cool. Now that the review is done, I'm gonna... Bleh. Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. It's Skelet Cool. Before I start with this video, just to let you know, uh, I do acknowledge that I've been gone for a while in a video I filmed previously, but I've decided to put this one as a priority because uh, there is a restock of the It's Freaking Bats palette by Shroud Cosmetics uh, in collaboration with Batty Bean. And I thought it would be a nice video for people to see so they can not only see a makeup tutorial with it, but also my thoughts and finally my personal experience with the brand and shopping for this palette in particular, and why I'm not sure if I want to still support Shroud Cosmetics as a company. So uh, yeah, videos will be out of order. I will pronounce this in the later video, but just to let you know, I'm not, I'm not just skipping on the fact that I didn't film for a while even though nothing particularly happened except depression. <laughs> so as I was saying today, we're gonna do a makeup tutorial and my full review on the It's Freaking Bats palette uh, by Shrug Cosmetics in collaboration with Belly Jean or Batty Bean, now she's called. I'm aware this video is probably gonna be very long because of the tutorial, the full review, but also my own personal experience in explaining everything that happened with this palette. So I'll make sure to put chapters, so feel free to skip to whichever part you're interested in if you want to only see some part of uh, this video. Um, and if you watch a full video, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> also, can we? Can I just give a quick shout out? I just received my um, Dreadful Pigeon uh, earrings, which is a UK independent uh, jewelry maker, and I got these very adorable little ghost earrings. It's the first time I'm getting earrings, so I'm really excited to wear them. Before we get started, if this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Celeste, I love cruelty free makeup, skincare, and spooky stuff that are kind of like in the realm of cute and not just like blandly scary. So, like, I love cute skeletons. But I don't really like horror films. I know, that's weird. <laughs> so if you're into any of these topics, hobbies, whatever you want to call them, then consider subscribing to have more content like this. I would love to have you here and yeah, let's get into the tutorial. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I want to do like a smoked out wing liner situation. So uh, we're gonna start with Derry as like a liner shade because it's a beautiful liner shade. And then we're gonna smoke it towards the inside of the lid with Adam's uh, pop at Grim on the lid, fading into zero, maybe with a bit of Sam. Trapper is gonna go kind of in the inner corner. Spooky is gonna kind of blow out the wing liner on the outside. And handbook is going to be like a little inner corner and lower lash pop of green to go with trapper. So it's a lot of shade. I hope I can try and put them all in. I try to put as many shades as possible because I feel like since it's my kind of official video with this palette, it makes sense to use as many as possible. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, let me start by priming my eyes. So priming my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden, just like tinted. And I'm also gonna prime my face because I like doing that uh, because then I can use primer to wipe off any, clean up any fallout or clean up the look, you know. So um, I'm gonna start by picking up um, like an angle liner brush. This is the 763 from Delium Tools, angled brow. And we're gonna pick up Derry, that dip purple. I'll take this one because it's a bit thicker. I feel like a thicker brush works best if you're trying to do something a bit more smoky with an eyeshadow. I'm gonna I'm gonna start tracing a, a wing kind of shape. There you go, so doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be super precise, it needs to be a bit thicker because it's eyeshadow, we're gonna kind of blend with them. I'm gonna pick up a precise firm blending brush. This is the E42 Precision Firm Blender from Sigma. And I'm gonna pick up Adams, which is the 
the green uh, teal shade, beautiful shade, pick up a little bit and we're gonna kind of like pat it over the wing and kind of like start blending out. I'm kind of smudging the brush basically over the liner and hoping that it will do something. <laughs> cool. Now that I kind of like created some sort of shape, um, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of dairy, the very deep purple, and just to kind of like go back on it, kind of smoke out that color into the turquoise. So I'm gonna pick up a small fluffy breading brush. This is the uh, E33 from Sigma. And I'm gonna pick up Spooky, which is the periwinkle shade. I'm just gonna use that to slightly blend the edges of this because it's slightly a bit rough. I pick up a little bit of Adams this time with this hand brush to help blend because this brush is a bit more fluffy so it works best to blend it. Cool, I'm gonna pick up a kind of big fluffy brush and I'm gonna pick up Trapper, the kind of green shade, which actually matches my t-shirt perfectly, which is really lovely because I love that color. I'm just gonna kind of blend at the front here. I'm gonna take a firm packing brush. This is the, I don't know, because the name is rubbed off. It's a Sigma brush, it's a thing, medium shadow brush, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna pick up some glitter primer um, in Very Baby Bean Stein. She and I use glitter primer to help kind of cut creases, define shapes, but also make um, eyeshadow stick very well and it kind of like delivers more pigmentation. So with metallic scent shimmers, it really makes them pop. And I'm gonna kind of define a, kind of a cut around the crease, obviously. I'm gonna try not to go over the work I did with the liner thing. The purpose is to can cut the top but not necessarily the bottom because if you put glue if you don't put glue primer then the shadow the metallic will blend better into the uh, liner work he did. And I'm gonna start with Sam, which is the kind of I don't know how to describe it. I don't know why each time I see that shade I can't help but think of crocodiles. And I'm not sure why, because it's not really the color. I guess if a crocodile was a metallic, highlighting metallic, it would be that color. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> let's pick way too much for this. I'm uh, gonna pick that up on one side of the brush that is still sticky. And we're gonna place this in the inner corner. I prefer working from kind of light to dark because then it means that you don't end up bringing too much darkness in your inner corner, which is not what I want. What kind of lightness kind of blends into the dark? I don't know if that makes sense. But just kind of placing a little bit of that in the front portion of the lid. And on the other side, I'm gonna pick up Zero, which is my favorite shade in this uh, entire palette. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's a kind of purple duochrome with like a green, teal shift and we're gonna place this blending into the green here in the center of the lid <gasps> i can't get over it each time i see i'm like oh my god this is so beautiful and i'm gonna leave a tiny blank space here wherever like kind of the basically there is that shape this is a blank space and here is the liner i'm gonna pick up I was about to get ready with me. <laughs> Cream, which is the um, teal shimmer. And I'm just gonna place it here to kind of blend into the teal and purple. Kind of a mishmash of colors. It's kind of both dirty, but like in a beautiful way. I can't like it. Maybe you'll find a messy, I don't know. Now I'm kind of like blending all the shades together. So I'm kind of like, tip tap it tip it tip um, like kind of tapping and switching side and tapping again on like basically with the different shades to kind of blend them together and like make them overlay each other cool what we're gonna do now is i'm gonna pick up uh, my blending brush i use with adams 
the turquoise shade, like the tiny firm blending brush. And we're gonna kind of like go back into first the turquoise teal atoms um, to kind of blend into the shimmer. And then we're gonna pick up a tiny bit of dairy, the very deep purple to like remind that depth and really help kind of blend again. Also took advantage of that um, to kind of uh, bring the um, bring a little bit of depth into just over where the kind of crease is cutting because I like doing that because I feel like it remix the I like the cut crease pop. But also it just ties the look together for me because if I just do cut crease on me, I don't know why it looks weird. So just kind of bringing that color and kind of like create that depth and like. I freaking love this look. I'm so freaking excited. I think I haven't done such a like look that I'm really loving in a very long time. And it makes me feel good because I kind of I haven't filmed in a while because of that. Um anyway. anyway uh let me repeat down the other eye, throw on some foundation, and we'll finish the lower lash line together and blush and all of that. So I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back. All I did was put on foundation, put the look on the other eyes, cup the face with a bit of bronzer. I used the uh, MEA Makeup Academy uh, Bronze Perfection Matte. Uh, cool. Let's do the lower lash line and then we'll do some blush and face makeup. So I'm going to pick up more dairy, the very deep purple. I'm just going to kind of define the lower lash line, so kind of like connect the wing adding a bit here. Um, now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use a very fluffy brush but quite small the one I used earlier to kind of blend the edges and I'm gonna pick up Spooky the periwinkle shade. I'm just gonna kind of like blend out the edges of that purple with that blue. But very lightly I, I just want to smoke it a bit. I'm kind of like flicking it out Blend out the wing, if that makes sense. I'm gonna bring it a bit in the inner lower lash line here. Now what I might do is use the firm blending brush I used earlier for like the wing and the uh, teal shade. I'm gonna pick up Dairy, the deep purple. I'm just gonna kind of blur this. So go back into like following the shape of the wing but just kind of like blurring it out. So I'm gonna pick up Spooky and a tiny bit of Dairy to kind of mix them. So going back and forth into them. And it's just to kind of like blend bare this shade again as I was. And now I'm gonna pick up a big fluffy clean brush and I'm just gonna go and blend the edges here. Because I just feel like I went a bit too low, as I always do with my lower lash line. It's very funny looking at myself because I think I never do look so smoked out, like here. I think it looks really cool. Uh, I'm gonna take the brush I used Trapper with and pick more Trapper, the green. Go here and towards the inner corner. I just thought just before uh, the camera died that what I could do is actually pick up some atoms, the teal color, and kind of connect to here, if that makes sense. Because that would be kind of fun uh, to kind of mimic what we have at the top, because you've got the blue, and then you've got the teal, and then the green. So I thought we could do that. Just like here. Oh my gosh, this is so pigmented. There you go, I think that looks really stunning. I really like that. Cool, and now to finish the look, we're gonna pop on some inner corner highlight. I'm gonna pick up my uh, ELF contour eye brush, I think that's what it's called. And I'm just gonna pick up Handbook, which is the Chartreuse Metallic. And we're gonna use that as an inner corner highlight. Just hitting here, kind of blending it into the shimmer at the top. Stunning. And voila, I fit almost all the shade in the palette. I'm quite impressed. <laughs>
Uh, let me just throw on some face makeup, lashes, lips, and then I'll come back and we can discuss further, I guess. Hello, welcome back. Um, I decided to kind of skip through all everything around the eye makeup because uh, I thought since it's gonna be quite a long video, I thought we'd just show in that part. So yeah, that's what's happening. Now that the tutorial is complete, let's jump into the review and my full thoughts on the It's Freaking Bats palette. All right, my thoughts on this palette. So purely these are gonna be my thoughts on the makeup quality of this makeup item, uh, purely as a makeup user. And we'll get into a bit more of the controversy, I guess you should call it, around the palette and also my personal experience, because uh, I feel like sharing that. So uh, what do I think about this uh, It's Freaking Bats palette? Honestly, um, do you want my honest thoughts? I think it's freaking bomb. It's such a good palette and I feel like um, Shroud Cosmetics, if I'm honest, as probably my favorite matte uh, formula. Uh, it just is really pigmented. You can pack on colors to really get that pigment out, but they're so very blendable and they just really blend into each other. It's just a delicious moment to play with. Uh, this palette, I find that has, the formula is a bit different from uh, the previous Shark Cosmetics uh, palette in the way that I think they are pressed very softly, which I'll, I'll come to talk about a bit uh, after. Uh, but they press very softly, so they're very powdery. There's lots of kickback when you pick up the color. I don't find that there's like tons of fallout on the other hand, which I think is amazing, but there is a lot of kickback like, which is kind of the counterbalance of having such pigmented eyeshadows. On the other hand, I do find that they're much more pigmented than previous showed palettes, which are already pigmented. I think I do prefer the matte formula of previous palettes, but this is an amazing formula too. Every single matte just blends beautifully. The only shade that is a little bit of a probably needs a bit more hand holding is Spooky, which is not surprising. It's kind of a very light pastel shade, so it definitely blends a bit patchy. I think the easiest way to work with this shade is actually not to blend it or just like either blend it into multiple layers and pack it where you exactly want that color really concentrated uh, or just pack it without really blending it because you will get that pigment. I think the Shroud formulation of matte is probably the most successful when it comes to pastel. Creepy cute palette, amazing quality. I'm just kind of like, it's the only pastel I would play with and this is no exception. It just needs a bit of hand holding and compared to the other shades, but I think it comes down more to like the type of shade it is. Our current technological advancement doesn't allow to make it better than this. I just feel like, you. It's hard at the moment to get better than this, so that's just my opinion. Dairy is such a beautiful shade. I love doing liners, work with it. Actually, all this shade in this palette are very nice to do. Like, if you want to do some graphic liner that is colorful, I think I did only one graphic liner look in my life, and it was with this palette. It was such a pleasure to do uh, with these eyeshadows. Let's talk about the metallics. I think the metallics are really where the palette shines compared to previous Shroud Cosmetics palettes. I do really like the previous palettes shimmers or metallics, I should say. I think these are even more bomb. I think these are, because they're a bit more softly pressed, they're a lot more pigmented right out of the bat, even with a, a glitter primer. And I really love the fact that they included the dual, dual chrome shades, I think they really nailed the dual chrome uh, formulation here. And they, they, the kind of dual chrome I really like, which is a dual chrome with an actual base color and then a reflect. I don't really like the kind of shimmery dual chrome where it's like very transparent and you can't really get a base. Zero is probably one of my favorite colors in my entire makeup collection. It's such a pleasure to use. I think that in terms of pure makeup usage, it's an incredible palette, I think, in my humble opinion. Now, on the other hand, the fact that they're softly pressed does mean that these eyeshadows are very fragile. And I've seen a lot of people having either their palette delivered and they had a bit of uh, eyeshadows breakage. I know Giovanna uh, on YouTube, her palette, like the eyeshadows in the palette kind of like spontaneously broke for some reason. I know my palette broke because I think 
I dropped it or it just kind of like, I think I, I kind of dropped it and there was some breakage. So I had to repress the shadows. Thankfully, I find that it easy to repress with a bit of alcohol. You spray uh, the palette with some rubbing alcohol and then you go in with pepper towel and like a very hard circular object to really press the shadow. And these, like my shimmers have been, this one, this one, and this one have all been repressed because they were broken. I think they still look really nice, so, and they're very usable. So I wouldn't travel with that because I'm really too scared of breaking it, if I'm honest. Um, mine didn't arrive without any issues, which I was quite surprised by because again, I live in the UK and I had to travel through Transatlantic. I can't say anything wrong with the color story. I think it's amazing. I find this palette extremely versatile, even though there's lots of complementary tones like the greens and purples like almost complementary which means they're gonna be really stunning if you manage to place them and not blend too much into each other in which case they would muddy up i feel like out of this nan pan palette i feel like there's so many looks that i've managed to create and very interesting iteration of colors you can create by mixing spooky and adams make this beautiful tealy periwinkly blue which I absolutely love. Adams and Trapper becomes that very foresty green that is very grungy. Shimmers are beautiful and I find again that you can really easily pair and transition. Sam and Zero, I wouldn't think that I would be able to play with them. I managed to integrate them into my look. The only shade I'm not like absolutely loving, but it's just, I think it's more of a color preference is Apparition because it's like a purple with a gold reflect, which is not my favorite type of purple. I really like my purple to be very blue tone base. And I'm not even sure if I try using it in a look. Maybe with Trap it might be interesting, so I might try doing that at some point. I think Batagin made an excellent, incredible job creating this color story. I think it's extremely unique. I think that's the thing as well. It's so colorful and yet so grungy and uh, very smoky. It's unlikely you have one of these colors in your collection. Uh, I know I don't. Finally, something I want to point out, which I think is really amazing, and I wish Shroud Cosmetics would do that with their old palettes, is that these eyeshadows are actually in a magnetic palette, so you can pop them out. Uh, be very careful with them, but I think that's really, really nice. Because the colors are so unique, you can easily pop one eyeshadow and using a different color story and really bring alive again your color, an, an old color story you may have, an old palette you may have. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's all my thoughts. Overall, I think it's a fantastic palette. <laughs> It's probably one of the, my favorite palettes to work with, if I'm honest, so. Cool, now that the review is done, I'm gonna kind of talk about my own experience shopping with this palette and the kind of issues I have with the brand at the moment and I'm not sure how to feel about. If you don't really want to hear about my experience, feel free to jump at the end of this video using the chapters uh, to hear my goodbyes and how you can help me and support my channel and all this whole thing. And I'll see you then. <laughs> if you don't know, I'll make it very, very short. There were some issues with this palette where they had a much, much bigger success than anticipated. So originally the plan was they had some palettes that were pre-made and they were thinking of making a few more and just basically put them as pre-sale and then the rest will kind of come into like restocks, you know, kind of typical indie uh, thing. The thing is, I don't think they planned a lot of palette and the palette sold out in less than a minute. I don't, I, it's not really my thing personally to like jump on palettes and like quickly check out and stuff. I want to be given my time to kind of like shop and just, I wish there was more, like brands did more like queue system and stuff. But anyway, that's a different conversation. After that, Batty Bean and uh, Chloe from Shroud Cosmetics decided to do an unlimited pre-order, which would be People can pre-order as much as they want the palette and they will only get the palette whenever it's made. Which was, in my opinion, people think it wasn't a great idea. I don't know if it was or it wasn't. It's not for me to decide, I'm not a brand expert. In my own personal opinion, I thought that was a great idea for people like me that don't really care about getting the palette super fast, but they just want to be able to pay it and be able to get it someday, wherever that day is. Honestly, I was ready to wait six months, a year to get my palette. I, it wasn't a big deal for me. I have loads of palette to play with and makeup is not, it's a hobby for me. It's not, I don't really care if I don't get it. It's not like, it's not vile for me. After that, 
they kind of like lots of orders were taken in and I think probably too much for such a small business to handle. And after a few months of waiting, people started getting really impatient and getting really annoyed because they wanted their palette, they didn't have it, and there was kind of, the updates didn't seem to make it seem like uh, the uh, orders are shipping super fast. And personally, Again, there was a lot of controversy around it and I was actually kind of comfortable seeing it more because people were really like eager and quite aggressive in the comment section of like really nitpicking at every single details and everything and kind of like asking for receipts from the brand and it's not really something that spoke to me because we we're also in the middle of a pandemic. And again, I'm someone that was kind of like, I don't care, I trust the brand, They like clearly, a lot, I've seen a lot of people talk about Shred Cosmetics before. I'm sure it's a trusty brand. They didn't run away with my money. So I think people were getting really annoyed and originally I was really defending her because I felt like we're in the middle of a pandemic, it must be really difficult just spend your time like making palettes constantly and it must have been exhausting and having people like coming for the brand of like I paid, I want my palette now. I know lots of brands that one person show and they managed to do that, so what can you do? Which I think are not relevant comparison when we talk about humans. Each person has their own capacity and each person can do so much. And I don't think we should compare just based off this human can do that, so why can't you? Because that's not how it works. We're very complex creatures, you know? Anyway, so that wasn't really my grip, which I think people would assume seeing, like hearing about controversy around Shroud. My, kind of issue with the brand is that a lot of the reason they were giving as to why uh, order was shipping quite slowly and that tracking didn't take time to update after like a few weeks was that the uh, post office that they were putting, giving away the uh, parcel in was very slow to scan the shipping label. I think it was also at a time where there was some, uh, I wonder if there wasn't some striking in like the post area. Anyway, I know like, I know post office can be quite slow, so it's kind of like, that makes sense. At one point my order was kind of like, they kind of said that they shipped my order. So a batch that included my order, right? And uh, after a while, it was still no updating, ready to ship and stuff. But then they kind of came and kind of were like, we wonder if the post office didn't lose the order. We're gonna reship these orders and uh, best case scenario, you get twice your order and it's like a kind of apology present, I guess. I was kind of like, oh, that's quite nice of them. That, that makes sense, actually. Uh, I think I'm probably, people might call it very naive. I try to be as understanding and compassionate, uh, even towards brands, especially I think small brands, because I know it's one person. So it's easier to be compassionate towards a, a tiny little brand, you know? And then I started reading comments. I was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure about this anymore. People were kind of like, are you seriously gonna ignore the fact that the US Post lost like thousands of dollars of sh merchandise and you're just gonna let it slip like that? That just seems really odd. I would, if I were a brand owner, I wouldn't just reship things because things are not free. I will come to, I will go to the post office and be like, excuse me, where is, where is my shipping? That's just ridiculous, right? Just to clarify, this was what people were saying in the comments on Instagram. In the email that the brand said at that time that is currently being displayed on the screen, they assure that they did contact USPS but were not given any response from them. We don't have any proof that they did, but they did say that they contacted USPS for reparation. People said that they think they had delay with making these palettes and to kind of help people be more patient, they print the shipping labels even though the orders were not ready. It was just a way to kind of like say, oh, it's shipped. And then when once they actually made that order, they then shipped and were like, oh, we're reshipping your order because uh, it was lost. And it was just like the, original shipping label was just a kind of a con to kind of like distract people. And now that I look, I think they are, I think it's likely to be true because my shipping tracking for the second order has been working totally fine and my order got delivered in February, which means that was kind of the, one of the earlier kind of post pre-order buyers. And yeah, the, the tracking worked for this 
The other one still to this day says ready to be scanned or ready to ship, I can't remember, which means that the label has been printed but hasn't been scanned by uh, the post office. I think what's likely is actually this label was just printed and thrown away. And what I find even more odd is that all these shipping updates, all of that disappeared from the Shroud Cosmetics Instagram page. Maybe they're doing some cleanup, maybe they just don't want to keep the updates in this, but it just also feels like they're trying to erase everything that happened. And like, in case someone was accusing them of lying, there was no proof on social media and all the proof we have is the emails they've sent them. Finally, my my last little thing is that, which makes me feel, mm, that's really weird, is that they said they engaged someone to help with like communication and then that person exited the brand. And I'm not saying this to be like tea or like uh, to be like, oh, let's just cancel the brand that did that thing that was horrible. No, I'm just confused. And as a consumer, it makes me uncomfortable when brands are not transparent about what's going on. I would much rather have the owner say, oh, sorry, I'm literally in depression. I haven't done a panel in three weeks because I stay in my bed all day than like having lies. It's, it might not seem like a big deal. I don't think it is. It just makes me question on whether I should support the brand anymore. Maybe it's a cultural difference, but I never felt like the spirit of like, I paid for my order. I want my order the way I want it exactly now. It's like, it's not really me. And I'm just kind of like, I, you know, I try to see the person behind it. And the pandemic was a really difficult time. So I'm not trying to put down the owner of the brand. And I'm sorry if it looks like that. I just want to share my experience because I would like to hear other people's opinion, to be honest. I would like to hear what do they think about this. And I just also want to be, I just want to be transparent about what happened because I don't know if I can 100% recommend the brand after having this experience. From the moment, if you're not sure if they deceived you, it's hard to be like trusting everything they say about how they make the products, if their products are cruelty-free, if they are vegan, you know, you can go very far once you kind of lose the trust into someone or brand. Because I think people really overlook this aspect of the story, maybe because their order wasn't in the batch, and they really concentrate the fact that they didn't deliver the order much earlier, which for me is not really the bigger problem here. I think the bigger problem here is the likely deception and play they've put out there towards a customer at a time where they needed to earn the trust of the customers. So I hope my story makes sense and I hope it's a bit more clear why I'm a bit not sure about whether I should support Shark Cosmetics anymore or I should just kind of like get on with it because actually I love the products to be honest. And I love the design and color story. I love the fact that they're cruelty free and vegan. There are so many good things about the brand. Please, 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 please share your thoughts uh, about my story, about this look, about the palette, about everything or nothing, about the current weather in wherever you are. I, I, I just love chatting with you folks, but I would love to hear your thoughts, especially about this, because. Uh, I'm just, I'm really like trying on my brain. I'm just kind of like, uh, I love the products, but I don't know if I can trust the brand, but I love the products and <laughs> I would love to have some insight. And hopefully the video will be helpful for you if maybe you're thinking about buying the palette, but you weren't sure about either the quality of the palette or the experience of someone playing with it or their experience as a customer. And I hope it helps you kind of make your own decision. Before I leave you, if you want to support my channel, here's what you can do. You can give this video a like, you can comment. Any engagement helps me gain visibility in the YouTube algorithm with my videos and my channel. And that's always appreciated. If you don't know what comment to leave, but you still want to support me, you can leave this bat emoji because it's freaking bats, right? And I thank you very, very much for your efforts. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Thank you so much if you stayed till the end because it was such a long video. I promise my videos are, I mean, I wouldn't say they're shorter because I make long videos, but anyway, cool. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope to see you very, very soon. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.